think it's getting interesting now. Skills, academia, skill set. Good evening. Let me make it absolutely perfectly clear that voting for this motion is not voting against universities. If it was, I wouldn't be standing here because like some other people, I have some interest in keeping a job after the end of the debate. What we are debating is whether the motion as stated states academic education will never provide the skills necessary for the IT industry. Now, previous speakers have chosen to interpret that in a particular way. In fact, they've done what a lot of students do. They say, well, a better question would have been and try and answer that. What it actually says is that academic education we are not in any sense disagreeing that it's a fundamental foundation. It is absolutely necessary. Looking around the room, we have successful people. I'm sure most of you have a university-based education. And I'm sure it stood, it stood you in good stead. Many of you studied computer science. Some of you may have even studied sort of vague old-fashioned subjects like physics and so on. There are some people here who maybe even did manage to study Greek and Latin. I'm not quite sure how far back we go. We are in a place of grace antiquity. Because it's been around a lot longer than the modern subjects. Didn't say there was anything wrong with it, I just said it was old fashioned. <laughs> so the, the question that we're, as, we're asked to deal with here is not, is an academic education important? Yes, it is. We can take that as given. We can forget about that. Any arguments we get for we should have university-based educations, sure, we can all agree. What we are actually discussing is whether that is not a necessary condition, because I'll certainly support the notion that it is a necessary condition. And I think we'd, we'd all agree on that. That's sort of a done deal. Well, most of us would. What we're actually arguing about is, is it a sufficient condition? Now, I'm speaking here today not as an academic, even though I am an academic. I'm speaking here as somebody who spent 20 years in the Silicon Valley that was just talked about and who hired a lot of people coming out of, and by the way, in the US, a four-year degree is just a basic undergraduate degree, and it covers about as much material as sort of two years of a degree here if you look at many institutions. So that was perhaps slightly um, gilding the lily a little. But what we are really looking at is when we get people coming out of these, these institutions, are they well prepared? Absolutely. Certainly the really good institutions and all of the ones represented in the room today are, of course, great institutions. We prepare students very well, but it's preparatory work. Before they can actually be useful in many environments, they also need something else. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way the world should work. We're in an environment like this. We recognize that many of the people who built these suits of armor studied for many years to learn basic techniques. And then, as part of an apprenticeship in the real world, put those skills into a practical context based on what they'd learned previously, part of what they developed up to that point, to then make it into something useful for the purpose they were serving. Now, if all we want to do is become academics and advance the fields of knowledge, Wonderful, and some of us really better had keep doing that. And I fully agree with the previous speaker that if we don't appreciate this properly and do it right, there's going to be such a deep hole, there's no way we can recover from it. But having reached that stage, we then need to build on that foundation, as my colleague said, to produce the other part of the skill set that are necessary to contribute practically to the IT industry. Can a university do all of that? No. And in fact, I'll argue that it shouldn't. A university, by its very nature, should be serious and thoughtful, which means things should change after dignified debate, after careful thought, after evaluating the long-term consequences of what are going on. So many of us sitting in industry will say, we need you to learn C++. And as a university, we say, okay, well, we'll consider that. Input is valuable. It's good to be relevant. We'll certainly do that. Let's think about the right way to do that. Let's think about how that, how that integrates into the fundamentals of education, how we create something that has lasting value and lasting benefit. We properly assess it. We properly establish the quality. Right, we're ready to go. Oh, sorry, we're not interested in C++ anymore. What we need now is Java. Okay, we'll get back to you in a little while. That relationship would be distorted to the point where neither side benefits. The university should 
provide the fundamental education, as both sides have said, absolutely. Do it well, do it properly, build a good, strong foundation. But then we need the other part of the picture in a collaborative way for industry to take responsibility for the things that it can do better. We talked about coding standards. I don't know how many of you in the room need students to come in and code, but if there are five of you, you have five different coding standards. Which one do you want me to teach? All of you say mine. Sorry, I can't do that. And I shouldn't. That's your role. That's your responsibility. You do it better than I would. But what I can do as a university is provide you with students who, as Dr. Mitchell said, think correctly, are rational, can analyze, are ready to be trained in the further set of skills that they need to be successful in the undertaking you want them to undertake. I would actually argue that even from the other side, academics benefit from input in that way, but we certainly should not allow industry to tell us this is what you should teach and in this way, because that won't work for exactly the opposite of the argument I'm making now. The difference between education to provide the basis for appropriate skills, training, and development, that's a relationship that must be symbiotic. And part of the reason we struggle in our profession is because we have this black and white, yes, no, you, or them. It really isn't that way. We are together collaboratively trying to build something of significance, which means both parts of it have to be properly developed. I would argue that, in fact, a good solid education in physics, mathematics, computer science, Greek and Latin, pick whatever you like. If you learn to think, if you learn to study, if you learn to grow, change, develop, adapt, apply careful thought, is exactly what you need to then go into the second part of your training as a, quote, apprentice, where you learn the skills that are applicable today. Many of you in senior positions certainly don't use what you studied at university in a direct way. You use skills that perhaps you learned this morning because you never saw them before. You've been prepared for those skills. So let me leave you with an analogy, because I like analogies. If you're going to build a building, fantastic structure like this, you need a foundation, you need walls, you need a roof, and you need really good structural engineers and builders to do that. Think of the university as being that. But you also need furniture and decoration and electricity and lighting. You don't want your builder to be your interior decorator. You don't want your university to be teaching short-term skills. So universities should not, cannot, and therefore will never be able to provide all of the skills that the IT industry needs. But they're a vital part to providing the basis. Thank you.